How's it? Hang loose. Welcome to Mongoose Max Hawaii. The... Uh... Channel. Ah... Uh, yeah. Mmm, still working in OBS Studio. It's the new machine in OBS Studio and the microphone which had a... I had a OBS filter filter OBS Studio filter on the microphone called a compressor just to make it sound cool and it was just a problem so I adjusted it and now it's like I don't even know what it is I just like <laughs> pressing the things <laughs> it's all hit and miss here what this stuff uh, that's how I learn what happens if I press that button hmm Hopefully it don't blow up. Okay, so today it's just a little, let's get a little serious, a little vlogging news. Vlogging news. The vlog is, I think, that it's going to be like 80 degree weather during the day, but it's still kind of chill. It's coming around to being out of, we had storm systems and storm systems that were hanging up in the north doing funky weird down here. And it's been windy, rainy, cold, cold, Rain, wind, it's just been a... Uh, anyway. <clears throat> um, and then lately it's uh, a lot of of the routine, regular... I mean, I got a dental appointment. My mom has it fixed in the calendar now. So every March is just a slew of eye doctor, Monday, then dentist, and then, you know, she does the foot doctor, the, and then that's, that's the main... All of her stuff, and then... And I'm the driver. So I'm like... Ugh. <laughs> I'm gonna trip over my tube. I am a geezer. I'm official geezer now. And now, okay, so that's the vlog. Now the news. The news is um, probably we're going to have to talk about, you know, T-Rump. Yeah, uh, T-Rump is um, doing his thing. Um... He's campaigning simultaneously while court battling multiple court battles. Now, a lot of the court battle stuff is scheduling. See, if there's a trial going on, you got something going on. But now there's like, we're going to set the trial date. And so that's a, a big thing. So the, the latest kind of weirdo, I mean, the weird news is, oh, this thing's kept over just a minute. That's about to fall over. Can't have that. <laughs> Don't want to be messy. Now. <laughs> so, <clears throat> he has this trial of <clears throat> January 6th insurrection trial. Now that one was uh, bumped up from the... First it was in court in Washington, D.C. So it goes up to the appeals or appellate court in Washington, D.C. And then it got like uh, uh, bounced to the Supreme Court because that's all it is. Appealing, appealing to the highest court in the land. Because basically the Trumpster uh, has um, gotten... Uh, oops, wrong, wrong board. <laughs> P-51 Mustangs and... Uh, okay. The appellate court, I mean, the, uh, the Supreme Court only decides if it's constitutional or not constitutional. And they get to pick and choose what they hear because they're Supremes. The Supremes, R-E-S-B-E-C-T, find out. So the Supreme Court gets to pick, and there are nine justices, and um, uh, kind of maybe more than half, but definitely half, are basically put in place a lifetime appointment by Donald Trump administration. <clears throat> so, um, so one of these decisions, oh gosh, I can't read my notes. Okay, that's a different note. Are these notes? Oh yes, because I have uh, Toastmaster coming up. It's uh, very busy. Very busy. Why, I don't know. But, um, um, am I, did I write them upside down? Okay, um, uh, okay, we're just gonna have to go off the cuff. So much for notes. <laughs> Five out of the four Supreme Court justices 
are needed to do the maneuvering they're doing now, which is in favor, basically, of Donald Trump. So they bump it up to the Supreme Court. So as, uh, or if it's the other one, see, notes. Anyways, Donald Trump is appealing to the Supreme Court for total immunity against punishment from law. So while he's president, he has total immunity. He can break any, basically above the law, which is definitely a Nixon thing. And the country, USA, our USA doesn't work like that. We're firmly established that no one is above the law. Even the president is not above the law. But he's going, I have immunity against all crimes while president. But he's not really president, even though he's running as an incumbent. It all gets confusing. Deniers. <laughs> Election deniers. So, he's president, but not president. He's, uh, he's saying that he's immune to all these things. So, if he's immune, and I have to do the hand motion. If he's immune to all these crimes, and then he uh, doesn't have any punishment, then, then he has to, um, he can do whatever he wants to. <laughs> like weird repeating hand motions. Uh, he, um, okay. The, immu <laughs> the immunity trial gets heard by the Supreme Court. They said, yes, we'll listen to it. Which is bonkers, for one, because it's well established that no no one is above the law, not even the president. So it's a non-starter. But the Supreme Court's going to hear it anyway. It's so historical. What, what are they going to hear? So they better make it quick. Because if they're sitting there going like this, hmm, I don't know. Hmm, let me think if, any, if the president is above the law. Let me think about that. If they're doing that, they are not Supreme Court justices. In order for all of this to happen, five out of the four Supreme Court justices have had to have had this happen. So we know the court, the Supreme Court, is five pro-Trumpers against four. Uh, so it's already biased. So anything you can get up to the Supreme Court, Trump's going to win? What? Because he's got his people in there? What? Now, as it's in the Supreme Court, there's a stay. A stay is everything is on pause. Nothing can go forward. So with the January 6th trial and trial date, is he going to be legally verdict insurrectionist in the court of law? Or is it people just, nah, people just saying it? <laughs> I'm not an insurrectionist. You're just saying that. Stop saying that. Stop saying that because it's counter to um, well, my disinformation. It's in a court of law, he'll be an insurrectionist. Therefore, bam, he cannot run for office, including the presidency, unless they come up with something else to deny. I don't know. Probably. Uh... So the trial date for January 6th gets kicked into the future. <laughs> this is, um, I mean, it's on hold. How long does the Supreme Court can do that? And also the, the Mar-a-Lago, the Florida case with the documents that are not given back. So they, uh, so it's obstruction of justice and, uh, uh, espionage act so it's like spy charges because he's showing them to other people they're top secret military stuff there he's he, he has the documents but you know you take a few documents back after office it's honest mistake kind of area and they forgivable and you go oh we need the documents back here you go and others have done that like even biden has done that as vice president with vice president stuff but 
Trump took truck loads, truck loads of boxes to Mar-a-Lago. And, when they, and they were top secret military stuff. And then when he asked back, he's like, oh, no, no. And so, and then he gave some and then kept a bunch and said, I don't have any. So that's a big case. That trial date might happen in this summer might happen before the election so they're all going oh we can't have trials during the election see he's running for office oh my gosh we can't have a trial when he's running for office no they can't but courts usually try to stay away from that as a you know uh, give him some leeway because we don't want to be accused of interfering with someone's politics <clears throat> They usually try to stay away from that. But is it a hard, fast rule? No, it's not. So, mm, but the way the courts are going, I don't know. It's just freaking crazy. And Trump is definitely stalling, 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 so he can win the election, which is kind of looking, I mean, you, he, we didn't think he'd win last time, and he won. And now it's like, He's going to expect that when he wins the presidency, he's going to make all those court cases go away. He's going to pardon himself. Uh, and he wants to be pretty much like Putin and Il Kim Jong. He wants to be supreme leader. America's doomed. We're doomed. I don't, I, 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 despite what his people and his courts, I don't. There's more people in America than him. Anyways, you know what? I think it's time to look at what's in the... What's... Okay, enough of that. Oh, so, what's in um, Hawaii news? Look, oh, look. Um, blah, blah, blah. He already unveils $3.6 billion budget for the city. And this guy's taking a picture of himself in front of the submarine. <laughs> That's a USS Bowfin. It's a dry dock from World War II. You can go and check it out. It's really, really small, but it's super cool. It's, you can go inside. They used to, anyways. Uptick in visitors, two major national parks drew three million people in 2023. Hawaii Volcano National Parks, because the parks were erupting. And I guess uh, Pearl Harbor, because I was like, oh my god. Yeah, it can happen again. Watch out. Everything goes wrong. You know why it's baseball season, that's why. Okay, back to this guy. He's taking a picture of himself in front of the USS Bowfin. Uptick in visitors, okay. All right. <laughs> It's moving, I think. I don't know. And then in the in the sports, baseball. Yes, UH, UH has a baseball team. It's all about UH Hawaii baseball team and stuff like that. You know what? Just relax. I don't know. Is this working? Okay, let's see if this is going. All right. Oh, from back in the day, if you want to relax, you just go down to uh, this guy's shop. He's like, yeah. So you some old bottles and some old dishes. Yeah, they're kind of like China, Chinese, uh, fucking kind of neat. Oh look, um, this bureau back here is from Iolani Palace, and Joe here is um, the geezer selling it out of his pawn shop. <laughs> the sad fate of many original furnishings of Iolani Palace illustrated by this sideboard, which is on display in Auctioneer Maurice's showroom in Queen and Punchbowl Street. Lipton does not know how the sideboard came into possession from the firm, which he acquired it. Photostatic copy of the Declaration of Digadigadig. Chamberlain to King Kalakaua testifies to the authenticity of the piece, which once stood in the state dining room of the palace. Iolani Palace. Okay, yeah, I got this thing from Iolani Palace. How much you get? At Tony Buck. <laughs> oh, gosh. <clears throat> Anything else kind of weird in the news? Okay, probably. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. Maybe there's going to be a peace fire. Peace fire. That's about the size of it. Cease fire in the Gaza. Okay. We don't know. We know that Trump is um, uh, trying to just dump some uh, humanitarian aid from above because they're not allowing humanitarian aid. Israel is, uh, and Netanyahu is commanding this IDF force, his, his military, to just wipe them out. The civilians, we told you to get out of there. We're just going to wipe all you guys out. And so everyone else is screaming genocide and stuff like that. But if they don't do that, 
then they got the same thing they always had, and they're going to have terrorists right over that little wall to parachute over, paraglide over the. So they're just like, they're not fooling around. It's it's a war war thing, but hopefully they can get release all the hostages, and then there's a ceasefire. They get to that point. I don't know if they can't get to that point. I don't know. Oh God. And the guy that Putin killed, um, everyone's going to his funeral, and um, they're starting to go like F U P U Putin. So, um, uh, and there's something going in the China Sea too. Uh, China and Taiwan are having little tiffs and tiffs. <laughs> hey, welcome to World War Three. And in the meantime, the political cartoon. Oh, look. See the Speaker of the House? Oh, I'm Republican. I'm so good at being Republican that I kissy Joe Biden Biden's boo -hoo. Uh, I'm just like Moses, see? Everything Trump commands. Trump is God, I am Moses. So Trump commandments to help not, to help Putin, no aid for Ukraine. Bipartisan border security, so it stays in the in issue. So, yeah, that's God. Yeah. Yeah, you're old like Moses? I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> Why? Everyone's... Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Let's just have a little finger on the pulse here. What do we got? Oh, wrong font. Try this one. Yeah, the cool font. There it is. Big companies. Age. Okay, here we go. Age is just a number for selfless U.S. presidents. I'm a little older than Joe Biden. <laughs> you geezer. And I understand what aging can do to you physically. Amen, brother. <laughs> However, aging with physical limitations has little to do with one's honesty, integrity, and compassion. When confronted with complex decisions... complex decisions on behalf of the American people. I want someone who is selfless. I do not want someone making those decisions who may be a little younger than Biden, but is self-centered, dishonest, ill-informed, and insecure. Dan Anderson, Kaimu Ki. Transition. <laughs> <laughs> it's early. <laughs> yeah, Dan. Yeah, thank you for your thing. Age is just a number, but you know, with the decision making stuff and all that. Mm. Uh, Mitch. So long, Mitch. And, you know, with that little pause of thinking, <laughs> we got. Um, yeah, those two guys, both of them are really old, and, um, I don't know, there's, you know, uh, it's a little younger than Biden. You can go a whole lot younger than Biden. <laughs> and you can still have, I mean, they have people with, uh, solid decision-making that are younger. I mean, JFK, he was, he brought us through that Cuban Missile Crisis. I'm sorry to bring that up. It's all World War Three, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways. Have a wonderful time. A wonderful time. Uh, I gotta find out which way do I go. I go out? This way. Okay. Have a good, um, whatever day it is. <laughs> it's, I forgot. It's a Friday. It's not a long Friday, but it's Friday. Okay, a long, have a good day. Don't worry. It'll all work out. Okay, I'm